Hey everyone, Joey here. So I said I would get back to you all and give you a heads up if I find any issues with 22.10.2 stability. And I know I did a big video, um, well not a huge video, but I was testing a bunch of games with the multitasking stability and flickering. And I said I had no flickering. And there's a reason I had no flickering. It's because I was recording with Relive. So Relive is why I didn't get flickering. And when I disabled Relive and I read, you know, Reddit comments on my video, some people were saying they're still get getting issues. I went and tried to replicate those issues and I was able to reproduce them. So basically, uh, one guy said, and he, like running the same model card as me, same series, you know, 6,000 series cards, having flickering with the UI when um, playing back videos in Twitter, uh, Facebook, or other websites. And they gave me a link to a good website that's the, uh, the UI on this website for the videos is really easy to see when it's flickering. And all of these videos would flicker when I played them while not recording. Okay, so, um, you know, if I just played it like that, this thing will flicker like this. Wait, if I move the mouse on and off it, it'll flicker like I'm taking the mouse on, on and off it. Like, it'll just keep doing that. And that can actually lead to a black screen driver timeout for some people. Not for me, but um, there's also extra details I want to explain as to why that might be. Why some people are having worse issues than others, as well as the fix. So we're going to start off with the fix. So even though they say they fixed the uh, drop frames and the playback acceleration issues with Chromium browsers... It clearly is not fixed because there are still people complaining about it. And then I'm going, going to go into detail into why AMD haven't fixed it yet, because I believe I know the reason why it's such a intermittent issue. Like some people are saying they're not having problems uh, on these newer drivers and some people are. So and there's a really actually there's a really good explanation for it. But anyway, first the fix. If you just want to fix your hardware acceleration, uh, video flickering, you know, UI flickering in Chrome browsers. All you got to do is change the graphics back end of the browsers because by default they use D3D11 and you need to change them into something less intensive, less, less bandwidth heavy. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any other, any negative side effects of doing this. I haven't, ex I haven't had any issues, but that's just something to also be aware of. There might be some unintentional consequence, like maybe something will load up a bit slower. But in terms of general use and multitasking and gaming, it hasn't been a problem for me. Um, so the fix is... You go into whatever browser you're using. So I've got three browsers installed, and I was able to test if the problem exists in all three browsers. So Chrome, Edge, and Brave, all of them have the flickering by default. And then I was able to fix the issue by using the same exact fix, which is to go into your browser URL, type the name of the browser. So that could be Edge, Chrome, whatever you're using that's Chromium-based. And for, for Brave, for example, I type the name, and then I do dot, dot, double forward slash flags and hit enter and it'll come up with all these experimental settings and i've actually messed with these before that's why i kind of had an idea of where to try testing uh how do i fix this playback issue and then type in angle and it will it will sort to the main setting that you need to change so choose angle graphics backend default is d3d11 and this might be a bit too intensive for hardware acceleration uh it it, it uses more thread uses more load that's the best explanation i can give and the def uh, change it from default to D3D9. And on all three browsers, when I did that, I was able to relaunch them. Like it'll come up with relaunch if you try to change it. And I was able to play back all these videos. And I'll link this. This is just a random uh, link that someone gave on Reddit. They said that they use this and it reliably re reproduces the flickering. Uh, I'll link this down in the comments below. Uh, I have no affiliation with whatever this website is. Uh, I don't understand the language. Um, and I'm not going to translate it, but I'll just link this so that you can test for yourself if you're having the issue. But mainly if you have anything running or if you happen to be screen recording or streaming, disable it when you're testing for the issue. Because you want to have as little load on your system as possible so that your VRAM clocks will be as low as possible because that's what triggers the problem. Um, and I, that's why I wasn't seeing the problem in my main video where I was testing all the games and stuff because I was putting load. The GPU was under a high load. So the VRAM is not going to drop to like 50 megahertz when I'm playing a game and even if the game's in the background. So that's the fix and the explanation. But now I'm gonna go into detail as to why this is a problem, uh, why people are having more severe problems, timeouts, and why AMD has said that they fixed it, but there's a reason why maybe they didn't fix it. Um, and as well as to why it tends to happen more on dual monitor setups, running mixed refresh rate. They, they even specify, and the explanation I'm about to give you like clearly explains why that might be an issue. So. The reason I know about this or why, like, I know about the details, the intricate, like, 
not fully like I can't explain on the driver backend version like on on AMD side but I can explain from the monitor side of things and that is because I had an issue with VRAM down clocking and I actually did a video on it um, ages ago uh, if I just search on my channel to show you this video and you can go to this video and give it a look uh, it will already explain it for you so stuck VRAM down clock and basically the issue is you'll be at desktop your computer is under very little load and you go into Radeon and look at your performance tab and your VRAM clock will be stuck at a high number, like even 500 megahertz is high for a VRAM idle clock. And it can be stuck at like 1500 megahertz. It can be stuck really high. Mine was stuck at 1700 megahertz. And basically it's to do with your monitor's pixel clock and your cables and the resolution and the refresh rate. So a combination of all those things, along with how your manufacturer has tweaked your monitor from factory and the profiles in the monitor that load into your windows or load are read by the driver. So basically it's it's a combination of all of those things. And if your monitor and your and the driver reads it as as the um, there's a specific setting called blanking time that affects this. And if the blanking time is too low, the VRAM won't downclock. And if you increase the blanking time, which fixes the down clocking, it also increases the pixel clock, which means you need a higher quality cable. And that's where some people have issues with cables too. Like they'll have particular cables that will black screen them. And then they assume the cable's a problem when it wasn't actually a fault in the cable. It's to do with the bandwidth of the cable. So, you know, go to this link. I'll link it down below and you can actually see how to fix the stuck VRAM clock issue. But this ties in with the hardware acceleration issue. And that is because every single monitor has different tuning, different uh, pixel clocks, different blanking times. If your monitor happens to have a high blanking time and then you've, you're, you've matched it with a monitor with a low blanking time, it can end up that the Radeon driver um, basically runs at the wrong VRAM clock to remain stable under hardware acceleration. So that's the best way I can put it. You've got two monitors and the VRAM clock is going too low. And you actually need to decrease the blanking time on the monitor with the higher blanking time out of the two. So if you've got these two different refresh rate monitors, open CRU, like it's this app that shows you the monitor's um, details. So this is on the video, but I'll link it down in the comments below as well. So I'll just show you what this app looks like. It's called Custom Resolution Utility. It lets you tweak uh, the registry side, you know, display settings uh, to do with what your drivers are reading. And if I open this up, you can see I can open up my advanced uh, resolution and refresh rate. And in here, it shows me detailed resolution parameters. And basically, you do need a good cable to increase the blanking time, and that will give you better VRAM down clocking at higher numbers, provided your cable can support the pixel clock. Because increasing this, say, um, at 70, which is what fixes my VRAM down clocking, if I increase that to 100, the pixel clock will also increase uh, by 10 to 20 megahertz. And if your cable is not the right specification, this can lead to also can lead to black screens. And what you want to do is you actually want to decrease it to increase. Um, it, it decreases the pixel clock, but for some reason, a low blanking time will also increase the VRAM clock that your drivers are running, if that makes sense. So this is a workaround method to fixing a problem that AMD has been having with um, hardware acceleration, stability, and mixed refresh rate monitors. So basically, you've got two, if you've got two, two monitors with different refresh rates, you've got to open CRU, uh, hunt for your monitor, like it'll be up here. I've actually got some I, uh, I meant to delete because these are just extra profiles that sometimes when you've had like a black screen, it'll, it'll, it'll refresh its own profile. Or if you've done DDU or anything like that, you can actually delete these through this app and it will do it later. And, or if you change the cables as well, it'll have like a profile for the other type of cable you used and it'll just be there. It doesn't hurt anything, but basically you want to look for your active monitors and you might have two here for, you know, you've got two monitors plugged in. Go to your active monitors, go down to extension blocks, open detailed resolutions and look for your whatever your active refresh rate is like your your high end refresh rate. So it might be, you know, 1440p at 165 hertz and open it and look at the blanking time here and you want to click the dot and adjust the blanking time to a lower number if you're getting flickering on dual monitor setups. So, with, and you've got to look, check both monitors, obviously. Um, check both active monitors you're running and see which one has abnormally high blanking time 
and lower it by 10 to 20 at a time. And when you, after you've changed the setting, so for example, if I lowered it to 40, then you click OK, and then OK, and OK. And then you actually have to restart the driver to enable that new blanking time. And the worst that can happen is if you set a invalid blanking time that's like a little bit too low or a little bit too high, it can result in the profile failing and then it creates a new profile and you'll, you'll just have a spare one here. Like it'll just be like a inactive profile will be added to this list and you can just delete them manually later. And yeah, so basically that's the worst that can really happen. It might stay black for a bit too long if it's an invalid setting, but just don't mess with anything else. Mess with the blanking time because that's what I know affects the VRAM clock. And when I adjust my blanking time, the default from my monitor is actually 40. And I, I have the opposite problem because I'm running a single monitor my blanking time was actually too low, and this was causing my VRAM clock to stay stuck at a very high frequency. And to stabilize my resolution and refresh rate at the desktop and in hardware acceleration, I do not need 40 blanking time, which is what, what mine was defaulting to. And I actually increased mine to 70, and that gets me idle VRAM clocks of 50 megahertz. But that's actually stable, except for with the video flickering issue. And that's something to do with what AMD, AMD have done some driver level optimization for DirectX 11, uh, not DirectX 11, DirectX 12 and Vulkan. And I believe something is just not stable when the VRAM clock is too low with hardware acceleration using, um, using the DirectX 11 backend. And so, yeah, basically maybe if I lower my blanking time, I could also solve it without having to switch to DirectX 9, uh, D3D9 mode. I could probably leave it on default and then I could just increase my VRAM, uh, my blanking time back up. So, so uh, back down, sorry. So I normally change it to 70 to get better VRAM down clocking, but because I'm getting flickering, instead of using D3D9, I could probably decrease this to 60 and it will help with the VRAM clocks maintaining a higher frequency under idle or under light load. And so that's basically the best explanation I can give. You want to lower your blanking time to get higher VRAM clocks to stabilize your hardware acceleration under light load or multitasking. Because when you multitask, obviously at the desktop or under the browser load, uh, your VRAM clock's gonna drop. And that's also where you have the crashes. You try to like alt tab back, it can't ramp the VRAM clock up quick enough or it's just unstable for the hardware acceleration side of things. Um, because the Chromium hardware acceleration uses GPU threads. So yeah, that's basically the main issue is that those GPU threads are not stable in the background. And you get the timeouts, um, another thing you can try is also go into your Windows, like I'm on Windows uh, 1121 H2, go into graphics settings and pick or add your browser. If, if you know your browser, like um, where the EXE is located, you can actually just, you know, bring up the shortcut, right click the shortcut, go to properties, and you can actually find where your EXE for the browser is. So the, the address and navigate to it. So you go to browse to add an app if it's not in the list and navigate to where your browser EXE is. Uh, or if it is in the list, like for example, Edge is in the list, um, the default mode was power saving and that could also affect the VRAM down clocking. And so you might wanna change that to high performance and then you'd probably be okay for the flickering. Um, but it depends though, it still depends on your monitor configuration. So basically that that's my best explanation I, I can give you as to why AMD has claim they could fix it, but then maybe there's certain monitors and combinations of monitors, which you got to admit there's a lot of monitors out there, that the combination of a high refresh and a low refresh that some people are using is what ends up causing the problem. You've got these this discrepancy with the blanking times and it's not stable for hardware acceleration. So yeah, um, thanks for watching guys and I hope that helps you out. And yeah, uh, if I find anything else, I'll let you know. But otherwise, it, it just seems to be mainly an issue with the hardware acceleration backend or blanking time. They're the two options you can go at it from. And yeah, hopefully that helps you out. Peace. Bye.